Okay, so I'm still on the bottom of 18, um, looking at that same scene. This is the, the sort of uh, uh, Iago. The, the first part of the scene is the long thing where Iago convinces Othello that Desdemona is cheating on him. The second part, um, and then there's a the whole thing with the handkerchief, and, and then... And then uh, Iago, uh, there's a whole confrontation on the beach where Othello is now upset by what Iago has told him, um, and Iago has to kind of talk to him about it. Um, so at the bottom of 18, um, one of the other ideas that the play suggests, um, and this is kind of a, a, a is, is ignorance, you guys have probably heard ignorance is bliss, um, is ignorance bliss. And one of the things that's raised in this scene is, is it better to be cheated on and have no idea? Because then at least you're happy. Um, or or would you rather know, even though it comes with all this terrible stuff, these terrible feelings? And so um, one of the things Othello is yelling and screaming about um, is he says he, he wishes he hadn't known. Um, he literally says to Iago, this is the bottom of 18. Um, he says, um, thou hast set me on the rack, meaning you're torturing me. Um, I swear tis better to be much abused than to know it a little, right? It's better to have terrible things happen to you than to know about it. Um, he, 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 didn't, he didn't know she was like this until Iago told him. Of course, now that this is true, Iago's making it up. What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, thought it not, it harmed not me. I slept the next night well, fed well, free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed, not wanting what is stolen, let him not know it, and he's not robbed at all. Meaning if you get something, it's a, it's a metaphor, right? If a thief steals something from you, but you don't find out about it because you don't even notice it was gone. It's like you haven't been robbed. And in the same way, if you got cheated on and didn't know, it would be an awful lot like not being cheated on. And I thought I was struggling with the issue of maybe it's better not to know. Um... And then Iago, um, and he continues on. This is Othello really kind of starts to lose his mind about this. Um, he says, I, I, I would rather she'd had sex with everybody I know that I hadn't known. Um, oh, I had been happy if the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body, so I had nothing known. And then he gives this kind of bonkers thing. Um, he really has a big reaction, an overreaction. I mean, obviously, killing your wife over somebody claiming she's cheating on you is an overreaction. Um but he has an overreaction right in the scene. Um, it's a pretty famously crazy response. But basically, he just feels like now that if he, Iago has convinced him that Desmond is cheating on him, she's not. Um, but he feels like now that he can't trust his wife, who he loved his wife so much, and now he feels like he can't trust her. Um, and he's, he feels like he's never going to be happy again. And he really feels like his entire life is ruined because he, because he, mental peace He's never going to be, he's always going to be thinking and miserable about this. And so he won't be able to concentrate on anything. He won't be able to do anything. And one of the odd reactions he has in the scene is he feels like he's not going to be able to do his job anymore, uh, being a military general. And he says, he basically says goodbye to his whole life because he, he, if he can't be happy, it's like, it's like he's, he's saying goodbye to everything. Um, it's a really crazy response. Um, I'm sorry, it's going to be tricky because I have to turn the page here, but I'll, I'll do my best. Um, uh, uh, he says, farewell the tranquil mind, meaning the relaxed mind. My mind's never going to be relaxed or peaceful again. He says, goodbye to my peaceful mind. Farewell content. Farewell the plumed troops and the big wars that make ambition virtue. Oh, farewell. Farewell the nang steeds and the shrill trump, the spirit stirring drum, the ear piercing fife, the royal banner, and all quality, pride, pomp, and circumstance of glorious war. So he's saying goodbye to his whole career. He's saying goodbye to the horses. He's sorry, I have to keep it. I have to attach something to make this not fly. Because if this copy flies away, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to teach you. Because I don't own a printer. Um, so he says he's saying goodbye to like his whole profession. He's just done. Um, um, so he he's saying goodbye to. He, he feels like his whole career is ruined because he's never going to be able to be happy again doing all the things he liked to do, which was being a military commander. Um, so he says the, the shrill trump, that's the trumpet. The steed is his horse. The drums, the fife, which is like the flute that they play in the military. Pomp, circumstance of glorious war. Um, he says, and he says at the end of this this speech, um, Othello Othello's occupation's gone. Right, it's like he can't even do his job anymore because his whole life is ruined. Iago, by the way, pretends he's shocked. Is it possible, my lord? Like, dude, this is all. How's that for irony? It's all your fault, and you're pretending to be like, oh shit. Um, notice, by the way, it's irony for us. I think it's ironic. We in the audience think it's ironic because we know what's really going on. Othello doesn't think it's ironic because he thinks Iago is actually surprised because Iago's tricked him. Um, this is an important aspect of irony: is always to remember: is one character saying something ironic to the other character? 
Or is it the author saying something ironic to you? This is the author saying something ironic to you. We're the only ones who notice the contrast between what Iago says and what he does. Othello doesn't know that, so it's not ironic. The characters, you, you wouldn't think it was ironic if you were there, because you wouldn't know. But you're in the audience, so you think it's ironic. All right. Um, so Iago, he pretends he can't believe it. Um, and he, Othello says, villain, be sure thou prove my love a whore. And be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof, right? I want, I want to see it with my own eyes. Or by the worth of mine eternal soul, thou hast better been born a dog than answer to my naked wrath. Um, by the way, minor bit of bad news in terms of Shakespeare. Um, this is a depressing thing. Uh, and I, I, I always tell my students this. I, there's something I, sort of funny about it. Shakespeare's like the greatest author who ever lived. Um, I've read so many of his plays. Like, I've studied seriously so many of his plays. And I got to tell you something depressing that I discovered. Shakespeare doesn't like dogs. He doesn't like them. He doesn't like dogs. Um, every single time Shakespeare mentions, whenever one of Shakespeare's characters mentions a dog, it's always something bad. It's always like as an insult, like, you dog, you dirty, low-down, lying, flea-bitten dog. It's like a metaphor for how bad you are, for how worthless you are. Um, he never says anything good about dogs. He never says, like, because you could say, again, we're in metaphor here, um, Shakespeare considers dogs to be a metaphor for something bad, for low-down, dirty, poor, desperate. But you could, if you wanted to, have dogs be a metaphor for something good. You could say he's loyal as a dog, he's happy as a puppy, um, he's free and innocent as a puppy, but Shakespeare never says that. He always, whenever he mentions dogs, um, he always has something negative to say about it. Shakespeare is not a dog person every single time. If, I've been talking, I've read, I've studied very closely, like, 26 of Shakespeare's plays, um, and he, every single time, he mentions dogs. It's always one character insulting another character by calling them a dog, and it is never saying anything nice about dogs. Um, I don't know why. It's a metaphor. See, it's, I mean, it's still basically related to class here. Also, it is crazy windy. I really, you know, oh boy. All right. Well, let's, let's keep going with this a little bit. Um, so he, he, call, he calls Iago, you, um, thou hast better been born a dog than answer my wicked wrath. And Iago, again, pretending to have be surprised. Is it come to this? Like, dude, this is your fault. Um, make me to see it, or at the least to prove the probation bear no hinge or loop to hang a doubt on, or woe upon thy life. My noble lord. Um, he, so Othello wants proof. He says, listen, you've, made, you've ruined my mind by making me worry about this. And he says, now I want proof. So it's actually a pretty good response, by the way. Notice that Othello isn't immediately like, I'm going to kill her, but he wants proof. But of course, Iago is now going to supply him with fake proof. Um, and what he, remember what he said earlier about the handkerchief was he said, um, he said earlier about the handkerchief that small trifles, little things, are to the jealous confirmations of holy wit. Like, jealous people will consider tiny little details to be proof that she's cheating on me because they're, they, they're expecting it, they're looking for it. Why is... Othello expecting it or looking for it, because Iago made him expect it or look for it. Um, so here, um, um, and Othello's really freaking out. Notice Iago tries to interrupt him here and here and here, but Othello's really just ranting. This is like a, this is really a massive speech, and Othello, Iago keeps trying to interrupt him, and it doesn't really work. Um, if thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more. Like, if you're wrong, I'm going to kill you and you're going to hell. Abandon all remorse. On horror's head, horrors accumulate. Do deeds to make heaven weep, all earth amazed. For nothing canst thou to damnation add greater than that. Right? He just he feels like this is the worst thing in the world. Um, and then Iago pretends to be surprised. Like, I can't believe this. Um, oh, grace, oh, heaven, forgive me. Are you a man? Have you a soul or sense? God be with you. Take mine office, O oh wretched fool, that livest to take thine honesty of vice. Monstrous world, take note, take note, O oh world. To be direct and honest is not safe. That's a joke for us, the audience. Um, to be direct and honest is not safe. So Iago says, oh, I can't believe you're so angry. Like, I, I, I guess telling your friends the truth is bad. And he's like really mad. To be direct and honest, it's not safe because people will just yell at you if you tell them the truth. The irony is, of course, that we know it's not the truth. It's a lie. But Iago is ironically pretending that like, oh, I just told you, are my friend and I owe my friend the truth and I told you the truth and I can't believe you're mad at me. I guess I won't tell the truth to my friends anymore. It's ironic because they're not friends and it's not the truth. Um, but he says that they're friends. He acts all like, he, Iago acts all innocent and he's not innocent at all. That's irony. Pick it up in the next video.